Yes, that means we are not going to pay tax on that. So, what is non assessable income? Then? Yes, tax pay income. Okay. There is another class called non exempt, non assessable. Is anyone have any idea regarding that? Those are some sort of um, government benefits, like disability um, um, pension or something. Uh, so long to do. This is a uh, you know, non non exempt called nanny income. Yeah, it's a nanny income, but as you told, age pensions and disability support pensions are not nanny income. <coughs> Those are exempt income. Okay, okay. Let's go one by one. The accessible income. Accessible income means there are two categories of accessible income. One is ordinary, the other one is statutory. What is ordinary income means what we are earning through our normal uh, work or normal when we are some people are working under some uh, employer. Some people are giving services and they are charging some money. So it's our ordinary <coughs> course of business. That means day to day what we are running. That's our ordinary income. Then some, can someone tell me what is statutory income? Income that law says you would declare as income. Yes. What kind of income? Interest income. Yes. Good. And dividend income? These are the statutory incomes. We are getting it by law, like bank has to declare that interest income to the ATO while they are paying to us. Same as dividends, they are paying us and they have to declare it to the ATO as well. So we are also liable to declare those incomes and statutory incomes, both incomes, ordinary and statutory, it comes on the employment, sorry, uh, accessible income. The main accessible income means employment income. That means what we are earning through our job. The, the second one is uh, super pension annuities and government payment. They are getting lots of government payment, but only some of them are taking accessible income. Some of them are exempt. We are going to talk about them later. Okay. The investment income, as you saw, like term deposit interest, or dividends, rents, capital gains, they are saying by law, we have to declare them. Okay, then if you have a business or a partnership or trust or anything, those incomes also you have to declare under the accessible income. Then you are, you are paying tax to the ATO because you are a resident for the tax purpose. So there are some migrants are living here they are, their visa category may be different. Sometimes they may be in permanent resident, temporary resident. There are different kind of visa categories. But if you are recognized as a resident for the tax purpose, you are liable to pay tax on your income. If you are a resident for a tax purpose, you are liable to pay your, uh, tax on income which is you are earning in the Australia as well as what you are earning in worldwide. Okay? If you are a temporary resident, you are going to pay tax only on your income which you are earning inside the Australia. But if you are earning some uh, rent, interest and some uh, capital gains, sometimes ATO may ask us to declare that income also under your uh, Accessible income. Okay, then uh, crowdfunding. Anyone heard about crowdfunding? What is crowdfunding? Have any idea on that? Yeah, like some sort of you know um, collective income for uh, some purpose. Mm -hmm. So uh, and ordinary people, friends, or some uh, group they uh, you know, support their purpose and, and collect money. Mm -hmm. So they need to do that. Yes, I think everyone is using 
social media nowadays. You know, the famous one is Facebook. Have you seen they are collecting, some people are collecting money to cancer community and for some animals or animal protection, so some flooding areas or something like that. We call them crowdfunding. That means they have uh, some people are organizing together and they are doing some fundraising from that so throughout their social media. Now they are collecting some money. People are thinking like ATO is not going to track us. We can hide from the ATO. No, there are some points ATO can find who are the people and who are the people going to get the benefit and everything. So you have to declare those funding under your acceptable income. Okay? Then any other income. Uh, do you have any idea what we didn't talk here? Of the inheritance? Uh, inheritance is not classed under that is a full income. Let me give you what is it called? It's also not classed under that is a full income. Other income is a No. That's the fixed forces. No, there's another income on the fixed forces. It's anyway, uh, different forces reserve income for anyway free. No. So we are not going to declare it also. <laughs> so yeah, other income is normally categorized in the and uh, some, sometimes if we use any asset for business purpose or uh, income activity purpose. Mm -hmm. And after depreciation, when we sell this asset, if we sell uh, over the um, adjustable zero or you know, over the depreciation zero, there is some income. Yeah. So we store it in an asset and in other income. No, it's uh, like uh, uh, it's not capital gain. So you sell it, you know, it's in the business. Uh, you mean it's in the business? Uh, it's in all, it's in all even um, uh, individual. Oh. If some individual people mm -hmm. use a car for work purpose and they sell it after depreciation, they have you know, the gain from it. So actually, well, I, th I think it goes like this. Yeah. If you are selling some fixed assets, normally it comes under capital gain. If you are talking regarding a business, it goes under business deduction, and ultimately we are gaining the, the loss or gain. The other thing is uh, our first car and first home. Uh, if we are going to sell those stuff, and if we are going to gain something <coughs> as a profit, we are not considering them as uh, our accessible income. These two are exempt. Our first car and first uh, home. Okay, but if we are having a second home or a second car, then we are taking that uh, right. As you said, so the here other income means if you are having some income protection insurance. Okay, if you lost your job, if you are having an insurance, you are getting some money. That means it recovers what you are not getting right now. That means it's like an ordinary income, so we have to declare it under that the income. Okay. Uh, there are some other stuff as well. So, if we are talking about categories of income, there are 24 categories of income. Uh, under the ATO, it's in your handout as well. This is the page six. If we take categories of income, the normally the main income people are getting is uh, salary or the wage. Normally, at the end of the year, everybody is getting a payment summary from their employers. Are you getting your payment summaries from your employers? Yes, that's what. At the end of the year, you are getting that because you have to uh, give it to the tax agent. What tax agent is going to see to that? What are the figures in your payment summary? Have, have you ever looked at that? <laughs> what are the figures they are stating there? 
Not in the damn floor here. Yeah, there's benefits like green benefits. Yes. Which super categories? All of them? No. No, no, not all of them. Over the mandatory ones. Yes. If you are going to yes, if you are going to do a salary sacrifice and if you are going to say your employer, okay, listen, I don't want this much salary for me. You can take some salary from my one. We call it salary salary sacrificing. If you are deciding to send that portion to a superannuation fund, then it is a, a reportable one under the superannuation contribution. But in your payment summary, you can't see the uh, what is compulsory superannuation contribution. Okay. The main thing is gross wages or salaries, what you are getting throughout the year. And employer is liable to deduct some money on behalf of us as a tax. Okay? <coughs> employer is liable to send that tax portion to the ATO. It may be monthly, quarterly, or how you are going to pay your wages. They are uh, sending those money to the ATO. We call it PAYG withholding. Okay? That figure also stating in your PAYG summary. If you are getting a fringe benefit, can someone tell me what is fringe benefit? Uh, something that's not money that your employer provides for you. Maybe the car park. Sometimes an employer will pay the students, uh, sorry, the employee's um, children's school fees. Yeah. That would be a fringe benefit. Yes. If your employer is giving <coughs> some benefit other than your salary and wages, Anything we call fringe benefit. It may be a car for your private use, then life insurance. It may be a car parking, the Philip car parking employer may uh, reimburse some money or he may pay some uh, expenses for our associates, for our husbands and wives and our kids. And if the value is more than $2,000, Employer is liable to uh, report that amount in your payment summary. If it is less than $2,000, he is not liable to show it. Why he has to show it under the uh, payment summary if that's a reportable fringe benefit? It's not taxable. Fringe benefit goes under the uh, nanny income, non expense, non taxable. The employer has to pay that. Yes, yes. So the employer has, has to pay that. Pay. Why they are reporting that amount in our PAYU account? Self defense. Self defense. Yeah, you They are reporting that amount in our PAYG summary. Some sort of mandatory life tax payment and other obligation that has to be payment to be eligible for the payment payment. So, if you, for example, if your income is 62 or 63, you have payment with, let's say, 64,000, but you have some fixed benefit. So, when So 
employer is responsible to uh, pay tax on pension benefits what <coughs> they are providing us. They are going to report it in our PAYG payment summary. We are not going to pay tax on that uh, report for these benefits. But if we have taken some higher education loan from the government or trade supporting loan, if we are in an income level which is very reachable to the medical levy surcharge payment, then we are taking that fringe benefit amount as an NA income and we are going to add that amount to the taxable income to see the adjustable tax income to see the thresholds for the health, tax, uh, trade supporting loans and medical levy surcharges. Okay? Then at that point, we take it as a benefit. Okay? Otherwise, we are not going to pay tax on the fringe benefit. Oh, good. And then we are getting some allowances from our employer. Now we talk about fringe benefits. Here, something else. What are the allowances normally if people are getting an allowance? Yes, uniform allowance, travel allowance, meal allowance. When we are doing some of the time, employer may give some meal allowance for us. <coughs> We have to uh, report them under item 2, earlier normal gross wages and everything we have reported under item 1, now uh, allowances we are going to report under item 2, okay. The, then lump sum payments, termination payments, different kind of payments we are getting from our employers when we are uh, find another job, we are going to resign. So, if we have a full, I mean, more than 10 years or something like that, we are getting a lump sum amount or the termination payment. So, we have to declare those amounts also to the APO as applicable income. Okay? Then, we are getting some benefits from the government. What kind of benefits people are getting from the government? There are different, different payments and different, different names. Do you have any idea? New start allowance. Pension? Yeah, pension. Age pension, disability support pensions. Unemployment benefits. It comes out like uh, family tax benefits. If your spouse is not going to work, then you are getting a family tax B for your spouse till she is uh, uh, working. Uh, they are continuing that payment. And we are getting a family tax A for our kids uh, till they are reaching age 18 normally. Uh, some plus, sometimes like if they are reaching till 25 and they are full time students in the university, again we are considering them as kids because they are depending on us. So then we are getting family tax A and B. If you are in a lower income level with lots of kids, so we are getting some, if you are in a rented house, we are getting uh, rent assistance as well. So family tax A, family tax B, rent assistance and government pension that like age pension, disability support pensions, all those are exempt. We are not going to declare those stuff. But to sit at all like new start allowance, fitness allowance, uh, there are some other allowances we are getting due to different reasons. Those ex uh, allowances are taxable. That means sometimes when the government or the central link is uh, looking after all those funds. When they are paying us that uh, payments, they are withholding some amount as a tax and they are sending that part to the ATO. If they haven't withhold some funds on behalf of us, at the end of the year, we have to pay a uh, tax portion on those allowances as well. Okay? Then annuities and superannuation, it's like uh, we are our employers are contributing to superannuation and we are also doing some superannuation as 
salary is sacrificing. So after our retirement age, we are getting a pension, like it's like our normal salary and wages. So we have to report that that as well under our accessible income. Okay. Then gross interest, dividends, and if employer is going to give some shares as an employer share scheme, if we are getting some dividends on that as well, so we have to declare those incomes also under uh, accessible income. And if we have a partnership spouse, if we are doing a business, if we have a rent property, everything we are going to declare as income. Uh, in our under our accessible income. If we take like business and rent <coughs> and the personal services income, anyone have any idea regarding personal services income? It's not a business. What What's personal services? Is that like a hairdresser working from home? Yes. If you are providing some service, but it, it, it comes, it may come under a business if she is registered with the ABN and registered as a business, it may come under a, a business. Otherwise, uh, some people are giving some services like you can uh, go, if you are drawing something, you can uh, so sell those stuff. Like if you are a plumber, you can. Uh, give some services to some people, okay? If you are uh, earning some money, then we call it uh, uh, personal service income. If you are running a business under business registration, we call it business income. For the rent, business, and personal services, we are taking income, and we can deduct all the relevant expenses against that income. Here, we are going to report only the loss on the profit. Not the uh, we are normally for the other expenses we are having a deduction column. That means for our normal wages and salaries we are having lots of deductions. We are going to declare those under the deduction column. But here when we are taking accessible income for the business, personal service, and rent, we are taking the net amount. Okay, we have to do it in a worksheet and take the net amount and put it as accessible income also. Okay, then capital gains, and I talk about foreign entities and the other incomes like uh, uh, insurance protection income or something like that. Okay, those are our accessible income. Then we talk about non accessible income. Can someone tell me what are the non accessible income? Yes, it's a gift. So we are not supposed to declare that. If we win a lottery, lottery money also not taking as a accessible income. But in a lottery winning, if you have uh, bought a lottery from an investment lottery, can someone tell you what's the difference between the lottery and the investment lottery? Yeah, some people lose out and get a fund for something. And from that fund, they just get a special fund operating and they can uh, use accessible for that fund or from that from the individual. So, based on um, what is the intention, they, they create a fund for, for purchasing the lottery, that means they do it in business. So, if that, that's the in that time, the lottery money is that the old or all to all. No, actually, that's not the meaning. Lottery means, you know, there are some lotteries like Lotto and uh, different different names. We are giving some money and we are getting some uh, return again money as a winner. Okay? But investment lottery means, if you are buying a lottery, <coughs> the ultimate result is you are going to get a house or a vehicle or whatever the benefit with money. That means we are buying that lottery ticket with the intention to get that house. That means we are doing that. Normally to buy a lottery ticket, I don't think people are spending that much money. It may be 
lesser than hundred dollar or something for the invest investment lottery. I think it started with the hundred dollar and onwards. That means it ultimate. Uh, you, if you are getting some, uh, our intention is to not to get money, but to get something like uh, property or assets or something like that with the money. That we call investment property. So if we uh, win something from that investment lottery, they have to declare it under as a separate. If they are going to win something with a normal lottery, that means just money, we are not going to declare that. So lottery winning, we are going to divide into two. So one part we have to declare. <coughs> okay. Then give, inheritance. Uh, if you are doing some home I I just make some dolls and I will uh, sell them to my friends to kids with a nominal value. I'm not going to keep a margin as a profit. Then it's my hobby because I'm doing it in my leisure time. So we are not taking uh, both incomes also and accessible income. Those are also non accessible income. That the second group of second class of income. Then the third class of income means non uh, sorry, exempt income. We little bit talk about the exempt income. Can someone tell what is exempt income? Sorry? Yeah, exempted by law. What's that? Not taxable. What are the exempted? Yeah, exempted yeah. benefits like I talked about family tax, family tax, the rent assistance, yeah, age pension, disability support pension, some. Uh, for study loans, study payments, or something like that. There are a list of uh, uh, government payments are going to be exempt from our accessible income. The third, fourth one, we talk about fringe benefits and uh, core contribution for the super. We call them like uh, non necessary non exempt. At the one stage, we are taking them as our income. To calculate medical aid, charge, and health prepayments and paid support prepayments and all. Okay. Do we have any questions uh, on what I have talked so far? Because now we are going to do our assessment quickly. Okay, we'll start our assessment then. What's the period allowable, allowable to lodge an individual tax return? What are the consequences for not lodging the tax return on time? I think we got the answer for that. Can we have the logic?
you can do later. I'm going to show you something else. Have you seen this before? Have you seen this before? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, this is the individual tax return. You are going to lodge your tax. So, here first phase, you have to provide your personal details, your address, full name, surname, everything. And you can fill that part. Okay, then we have talked about accessible income. It's here. Okay, now you know what are the accessible income and what you have to declare to the EO. <coughs> so you can uh, fill all income under each section. They are specifically saying the number one is wages and salary, then the allowances. So you have to take your income and see which category is you are going to declare that amount and you can fill the income section. 
Are you confident with that now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I will uh, going to give you these tax returns for you, and there's another question, so you can send it to me through uh, an email. And okay, first I will give this one. mark you on that assessment and send it to you again. And the other thing is, uh, next week we are going to talk about deduction. So you have to do your reading before you come here. And the other thing is, I am going to collect some feedback from my presentation. So I will uh, email that uh, form to you guys. So you can fill it and sign it and send it to me back. So today we have discussed about income. So if you have any question or if you need any further clarifications, you can talk to me or you can uh, send me an email regarding your concern. Okay. Thank you so much for coming here today and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.